So the new Ryzen's got released a few days ago and of course we are going to test it for sim racing. Do we have a new recommendation for best CPU? Well, yes, no, it's complicated, but let's get into detail. If you followed the media in the last days, what you probably learned is that the Zen 4 Ryzen's runs insanely hot at a very high power consumption and typically beats the current Intel flagship that is the 12900K. And also that it gets beaten quite often by the older 5800X 3D cache version from AMD's last generation. Well, most of it is true, but sim racing, as always, is a little bit special. The GPU I used for testing was an overclocked 3080 Ti that beats my 3090 basically for anything in sim racing. And to get a sense how good the 7950X is, I put it up against my 12900K and the 5800X 3D. It was basically provided by the community. Thanks for that again. On a few benchmarks, I also ran it with my old 5950X. I also set the RAM to the fastest timings and clock speeds that I could achieve with each processor. For the 5800X 3D that was a DDR4 kit with 64GB running at 4000MHz. For the 12900K and the 7950X I used a 32GB DDR5 kit. On the Intel I could get a stable system at 6800MHz but the Ryzen would not get stable at anything above 6000MHz so that's what I settled for. I know it would be a better comparison to run both at the same memory speed, but if your architecture allows faster RAM speeds, you should also benefit from it in my opinion. The Zen 4 is a new platform and I'm sure the biases will mature over time. The very same RAM kit was running at 5600 MHz at early BIOS versions with the 12900K, so time will tell and I guess it will improve. For all benchmarks, I've used a clean Windows install to not get any influence here. One thing to maybe keep in mind. 12900K and the 7950X were benched using a X73 NZXT 360mm AIO, whereas the 5800X 3D and the 5950X was benched in a custom loop with obviously lower temperatures. All CPUs are running stock speeds without any overclocking. As for games, I've done iRacing and Assetto Corsa Competizione with 1080p single screen and then also 1440p triple screen. Also done a few benchmarks on 4K triples, but the result of that are a little bit pointless since we are heavily GPU bottlenecked in that scenario anyways. Let's start with ACC and 1080p on a single screen. I've used the graphic preset medium for this scenario and for me there are two surprises here. First one is how much quicker the 7950X is over the 12900K with the 7950X at around 274 FPS and the 12900K at 221 FPS and the older 5950X averaging 219 FPS. But then there is the 5800X 3D which uses a fraction of the power of the other three and basically wipes the flow with them scoring an average frame rate of 288 FPS. That's absolutely crazy. I mean, I've seen the benchmarks of the 3D cache Ryzen but wow. That's a pretty impressive result. This was actually the first benchmark run that I've done and I was like, awesome, <laughs> this is the CPU that will stay in the system. But let's check a more realistic scenario running triple screens at 1440p resolution. And I was surprised again. If we have a look at the numbers here, the 5800X 3D actually lost the lead and the 7950X took over. I've repeated the benchmarks running different scenarios and it was always the same. The 3D Ryzen just loses more performance when going to triple screens. To be honest, I don't really have any explanation why this could be since we are introducing a GPU bottleneck now, but all four processors were benched using the same GPU. But let's still have a quick look at the numbers. The 12900K was last with 73 FPS. Then we have the 5950X with 78 FPS on average and the 5800X 3D taking second place with 79 FPS. The 7950X won this round with an average of 86 FPS. Something that is not really reflected in the numbers, but the playback of the game seems significantly smoother on all the Ryzen's compared to the 12900K. If you have any explanation why the triple benchmark gives such a different result, in the CPU ranking, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd be very interested to understand this. I've done some more benchmarks on ACC, but the results always were very similar, so I'm not going to show them here. But yeah, let's move on to iRacing. I've done some more benchmarks here because it's just so heavily dependent on the track and number of cars and other stuff that probably even iRacing doesn't understand themselves. We are starting with a single screen 1080p benchmark with a full 60 car grid at Long Beach. Again, I recorded 60 seconds of the first lap. And in this scenario, the 12900K and the 5800X 3D perform very similar, with the Intel at 136 FPS and the Ryzen at 138 FPS on average. The 7950X scored quite a bit higher at 156 FPS on average. I still don't really know how to generate a CPU bottleneck on iRacing, to be honest. You would think 1080p single screen would be a good start, but then you have like Long Beach at 
mid 150 FPS and then you go to spa with the same settings and you get 500 FPS. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I've heard people say rendering of buildings impact the CPU somehow as well. I, I really have no clue, but these are the results. Let's move over to 1440p triple screen benchmark in the same situation. Oh, by the way, the FOV has quite a big impact on performance. The single screen benchmarks were done without triple screen rendering, obviously, and an FOV of 60 degrees, whereas the triple screen benchmarks were done with triple screen rendering enabled and an FOV of 180 degrees. So if we look at the numbers, we see they are all similarly bad in the situation with the 5800X 3D, being at around 56 FPS, the 12900K at around 59 FPS, and the 7950X once again being the least slow one of the three at 61 FPS. I've also repeated this benchmark at triple 4K, which is absolutely useless for a CPU test, but here are the results. Okay, next test is an European sprint series race around Spa. For a more realistic scenario, I've used lap 5 because like, I mean, we are very briefly at the start and then the rest of the race is just like with fewer cars. And again, I've recorded 60 seconds. At 1080p single screen, we get a significantly higher average frame rate with the 5950X at 361 FPS, the 5800X 3D at 369 FPS, the 12900K at 408 FPS and the 7950X taking the crown once again with 462 fps. It's still unplayable though, iRacing please fix your game, we need at least 500 fps. Moving over to 1440p benchmarks, we are entering the GPU limited area again, with all four being relatively close, but the 7950X is still coming out on top, with a few fps more than the competitors. I've also done this scenario in 4K and even though I expected it to be useless, uh, the 5800X 3D fell off compared to the other two, with the Intel and the 7950X at 89 FPS, respectively 93 FPS, the 5800X 3D drops to 78 FPS. That's not a giant difference, but still I wonder why the 5800X 3D seems to struggle more when it comes to higher resolutions. We've seen the same on ACC, it's, it's just strange and I can't really explain it. Okay, last scenario is the iRacing Community Benchmark by Jason Polychronopoulos. You can find this one on the iRacing forums and it's basically a set of settings that renders a triple screen image into a 1080p output and it's a replay so you can compare your results with a growing database of results. I've done the benchmark with all three CPUs, of course, and here are my results for SPA. The 5800X 3D once again on iRacing is the weakest processor at 115 FPS. The 12900K takes P2 with 128 FPS and the 7950X takes the crown with 134 FPS. So for sim racing, the 7950X definitely is a super strong option, winning most of the benchmark scenarios that I have tested on ACC and on iRacing. If you're on a single screen, you can also have a look at the 5800X 3D and save a lot of money, since you can use last generation boards and DDR4 memory, which is much cheaper. Especially the 7950X is really expensive at 820 euros and they are ridiculously expensive motherboards even though that should get a bit better with the release of the B650 chipset boards but I think the cheapest one that I found today was at like 250 euros. But we are not done yet. I wanted to talk a little bit about undervolting and overclocking of the 7950X. The results you've seen were all using the default config with no overclocking but especially the sample that I got here can undervolt quite a bit. I've actually had no problem to run this on a negative 30 points curve using PBO2. The Ryzen's do run really hot in a synthetic benchmark at 95 Celsius and will adjust the boost frequency accordingly. If you undervolt the processor though, that basically means that the processor will produce less heat and can maintain higher clock speeds for a longer time. I've also managed to overclock the sample here to boost clocks over 6 GHz, which gives a nice performance boost in the 1080p benchmarks. But then again, is it worth it? I don't really think so. Definitely not with my scenario with a GPU bottleneck. I will, however, continue to run it undervolted, but will probably settle for a negative 20 to 25 points, which should introduce some safety margin for day-to-day -day use. The processor also runs super cold when undervolted, while on iRacing you rarely exceed 55 Celsius. The 5800X 3D and the 12900K definitely run hotter, even with the 5800X 3D on a custom loop. Power consumption between the 12900K and the 7950X is comparable. If we take the 1080p runs where we are not GPU bottleneck, the 12900K uses about 117 watts and the 7950X about 105 watts. 
The 5800X 3D uses significantly less power at around 67 watts. One thing that definitely confused me is the performance of the 7950X for content creation. I thought this should be a super strong combo for single PC streaming, but there's definitely something off here. I've done quick test runs and saw an FPS drop of about 15% on the Insel and the 5800X 3D running on 1440p triple screen and using the NVENC encoder on the quality preset, actually on the maximum quality preset. If I switch over to the 7950X, I actually lose about 25% of performance using the same settings, dropping the average frames per second actually behind the 5800X 3D and the Insel. I wonder if it has something to do with the chip having two chiplets and maybe the scheduler being not optimized enough for these scenarios. I don't have any clear idea why this is happening to be honest, but I will probably do some more investigations and play around with tools like Process Lasso and will probably make an update video once I know the cause for this and if I find a solution. So yeah, these are the first results of the new 7950X for sim racing. I will probably do some more comparisons with the 5000 series Ryzen's. I still have also the 5600X here and I wonder how it compares to that. And of course, I will also try to get a 13900K to repeat the benchmarks with that one. But first, 6090 release, I guess that means canned soup for the next weeks. Oh, and by the way, we do have channel memberships on YouTube now, so if you want to support the channel even more, check it out. I will also try to do some VR benchmarks, but at the moment my HP Reverb 2 decided to not work again. It's kind of always a gamble with that headset. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I, I don't know. Also, if you want to repeat the benchmarks that I have done here, I will upload the replays and the settings so you can compare it to your system. But yeah, that's it for now. If you liked the video, maybe give it a thumbs up, leave a random comment for the algorithm and subscribe to the channel to not miss future videos. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.